You are listening to Cycling Podcast at the 2018 Tour de France in association with Rafa. From Grand Tours to Group Rides, the Champs Elysees to coffee shops, Rafa exists to celebrate the world's most beautiful sport. Today we are in Cholet. Well, we were played in there by the voice of Seb Pique, a familiar voice, but I was standing by one of the motorbikes at the, at the finish today and race radio was coming through there and I happened to be passing just as BMC were crossing the line, so I was able to capture there the voice of Seb Pique, the official race radio at the Tour de France, declaring uh, BMC to be the fastest team so far and that was a result that stood the test of time. Where are we, Lionel? We're in Cholet, outside the delightful Kyriad Hotel, one of the town's high Premier spots. Premier tourist attractions, I think. But a, uh, a hotel whose restaurant came to your rescue last night, Francois. It did. Uh, it did indeed. I was staying... Uh, can I name the place? Yes, I can. I, I was staying in the Campanile. You know, it's a kind of chain restaurant, like motel. Uh, and when I got there last night at 5 past 10, the memories of France, for some of you maybe, I was told the kitchen was closed and I couldn't have uh, any dinner so you know uh, for my English friends it's, it doesn't happen only to you <laughs> it also happens to the locals but so uh, and the lady told me oh but you've got a great Burger King up the road <laughs> along the cemetery so I, I started <laughs> Burger King by the cemetery it doesn't get more glamorous <laughs> than that so I, I started walking towards the cemetery when all of a sudden I spotted the place where we are now which is another chain hotel called Kiriad and the Wanti group Gobert were staying there and there was a, a, a delight delightful uh, young woman called Jessica, I think, and uh, I asked her, is it possible to save my life and, you know, give me something to eat? And she, and I, I finally, finally had the Wanty Group Gobert menu, which was, uh, uh, could I say, just average. But it saved my life. Well, really? it propelled them to a very <laughs> impressive 21st today in the team time trial, just two minutes, 24 down. Penultimate, Penultimate team. team. The only team worse than them was Coffee Dees. It's probably the Poupiette, you know. And I think, <laughs> Lionel, you rode the team time trial course this morning with Tom Carey of the Telegraph. I believe you went a little bit quicker than Coffee Dees. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that publicly for the for people to hear. That was just a, a small joke between us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, you're right. We did get up and went and rode the course and it suddenly came all came back to me i've ridden more or less the same course before 10 years ago when there was an individual time trial here in cholet on more or less the same course that it was slightly shorter that day today they did a little detour off the country road to take in a small climb um past some houses and um it was about maybe five or six kilometers longer today um but it it was a typical rolling country fair um and uh, the wind was blowing a bit when we rode, um, and it, it was, well, it was a, it, there was, it was a course that offered risk and reward, I think, um, and we saw that from the results. Well, let's hear the results. Let's hear your tale of the attack, please. Okay, stage three from Cholet to Cholet, 35 and a half kilometres, a team time trial, and BMC racing the pre-race favourites. Uh, well, they won. Uh, an impressive performance um, that has catapulted Greg Van Avermaet into the yellow jersey for the first time since his stage win at Le Lyon two years ago. Um, BMC, Team Sky, Quickstep Floors and Mitchelton Scott were the first four. Team Sunweb were fifth. Team EF Education first was sixth. And the, I suppose the surprise result was a disappointing performance by Movistar, who lost 53 seconds to BMC, um, <laughs> which means that there, well, Nairo Quintana has made up no ground whatsoever, and we would have expected him to do that a bit today. But Movistar, well, looking at the splits, they went out too hard and paid for it at the end, whereas BMC, Team Sky, Quickstep, and Mitchelton Scott really got the, the pacing um, spot on. And you've got to include Sunweb in that because they Sunweb were all, with it, all within 11 seconds of one another. And so Sunweb, I think, were, were quite fast finishers, so they seem to get it get it pretty much right. Yeah. Um, so Van Avermaet in yellow. Peter Sagan is now back in the green jerseys. Already got a healthy lead, 104 points. 
over Fernando Gaviria, 78. Dion Smith is still in the polka dot jersey. He's tied on one point with Kevin Ludanois. Um, that will probably change tomorrow. And the white jersey is now on the shoulders of Sunweb's Soren Kral Anderson. Whoa. That has been verified by the pronunciation police and <laughs> until until lots of uh, lots of people tweet me to say I got it hopelessly wrong. But that was a, that was my best effort at that. A community around the world, stories and films with the most compelling characters, the world's finest apparel, explore the world of cycling with Rafa. I'm Simon from Rafa. At Rafa we believe that cycling transforms lives and that riding's the answer to many of our daily problems and challenges. We have 23 Rafa clubhouses around the world and we host 300 rides a week with thousands of people. So wherever you are, we invite you to ride with us. See rafa.cc to find a ride near you. Thank you very much to our headline sponsor, Rafa. Their support helps us to be here bringing these daily episodes. We're very grateful to them. Uh, We will, of course, be presenting Peddler de Charme later in the week. Presenting one lucky rider with uh, one of the coveted Peddler de Charme t-shirts. Uh, t-shirts, jerseys, caps, all available at rafa.cc um, but we will be looking for nominations for Peddler de Charme so please get them coming in. Are there any early contenders? Peter Sagan a few people have suggested him just for various acts of generosity and kindness towards spectators, handing them dropped sunglasses and, and generally being being a good egg um, but, but how, any, how will he, how will he wear the Peddler de Charme t-shirt he's I got mean, he's, enough hasn't he's he? got so many other jerseys heat, that he needs to yeah, wear he's gonna be <laughs> that's the one missing on you know on his collection it's the one so missing I'm on sure. his collection actually yeah. he's never won Peddler de nope, Charme none of that no it's the one he the one he he probably if he knew about it would would absolutely be after it Oh, without a shadow of a doubt Lionel yep. without a shadow of a doubt so listen we, we lost you today uh, Francois but as we as we debuted last night the Francois French flavour, a flavour of France with Francois, however you want to say it. What can you tell us about where we are now? Well, especially about where we are now, we are about 200 metres from the police station, which is, which, is not, uh, which is very important because 20 years ago, the same police station, Bruno Roussel, the head of Festina, was taken to custody or, as we say, was hurt for, held for questioning. And this led to the old Festina scandal to unfold in many ways because that's, when, that's in that police station that Bruno Roussel said, yes, there is organized doping in Festina. So, I mean, you know, all the, these these 20 years of doping turmoil started actually started 200 meters from where we hurt. stand yeah. <laughs> um, well <laughs> that's for the, uh, well some you know maybe not the best french flavor you want to hear about uh, another f- uh, story about Cholet, the, the local specialty is handkerchiefs and you know why because I mean, it, and it's it has to do a little bit with the polka dot jersey you'll see in a minute uh, there was I, I told you last night about the uh, you know, counter-revolutionaries called the Les Chouans, you know, the, re- the local rebels, and one of their generals went to battle with white handkerchiefs on his chest, on his hat, and on his belly, so that his troops could follow him better. But actually, what it did was well, with these white handkerchiefs, the the, uh, the 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 enemies could could actually aim at at the handkerchiefs, and he was he was actually shot at several times. And so the 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 white handkerchiefs were were, were all you know sparkle with polka dot, yeah. polka, dot, <laughs> polka, dot, polka, polka handkerchief. dot all over the place. Oh. And 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 this is why the, to to this day in Shul they make uh, white and red handkerchiefs. That was the French flavor of the day, which once again was a very flavory one. <laughs> oh, the, the the polka dot handkerchiefs of death. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. As was the team time trial, Rich. Now, was, one thing I meant to mention in my uh, tale of the attack there was just to clear up why the start order was so peculiar um front loaded with all of the strong teams uh, setting off first Mitchell and scott were first sky were very early starters so were movistar well the reason for that was because the order was decided by the general teams classification not the general classification of individual riders but the teams classification with one exception uh, and that was to put Peter Sagan's Bora Hansgrohe team off last because he was in the yellow jersey. So what we had was quite an unusual team time trial in which most of the action was in the early part of the stage. Mitchelton Scott set a very good time and uh, only three teams managed to beat that. Um, team Sky, uh, one of the other early starters, 
um, did beat that, of course, and, and BMC. Um, and so it was kind of a topsy-turvy old day, really. The, all the interest was in the early half. Well, there, there was a right amount of suspense thanks to Quick Step. They, 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 they were starting, I think, uh, well, just anti-penalty mate or something. And um, oh, it's a word I didn't, never thought I would use, but there, there you are. And, um, and yeah, and Quick Step were really challenging uh, BMC until the, 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 the last uh, stretch. When, and there was a chance for Philippe Gilbert to take the, uh, the yellow jersey, but they missed out probably because there were only four of them left at that stage, Alaphilippe, Philippe Lampard, Jung Gauss and uh, Gilbert. Well, yeah, just, uh, I mean, the, the, the general classification now has kind of, um, it's got a quite a team flavour to it because Van Avermaet is uh, leading, he's wearing the yellow jersey, but he's level on time with TJ Van Garderen, his BMC racing teammate. Team Sky's Geraint Thomas is third. He's kind of the only one on his own because after that, three quick step riders, Gilbert, Jungles, and Alaphilippe, and then three Sunweb riders, Dumoulin, Kraut, Anderson, and Michael Matthews. Uh, Rigoberto Uran rounds out the top 10. Uh, so, really, you look at that Uran, Dumoulin, Thomas, TJ Van Garderen, even, mm. uh, will consider that a very good day. Oh, it's, it's amazing how often those four teams finish in the first four in these team titles. It's just incredible. Uh, Sky, BMC, Quickstep, and Mitchell and Scott, they are so dominant, really. Um, and Team Sunweb, the world champions. I'm trying to think of a rider who had a, a really bad day today who can joke that the, the crying baby you can maybe hear in the background is that rider, but nobody springs to mind. Um, but those teams have really turned it into an art form, and no one more than BMC. I mean, mm. their record in this discipline is really phenomenal. Yeah, they won the seven, uh, seven of the last 11 uh, World Tour level uh, team time trials. A an interesting stat. Uh, oddly enough, Team Sky have yet to win a team time trial on the tour. On the tour, they they do. Mm. They have a kind of mixed record. We'll hear from Gary and Thomas a bit later, who argues that they've been pretty consistent, but they they haven't had that win, which is which is surprising. And I think a lot of people expected this year because they had uh, on paper what looked like the strongest team. And it is amazing. It always amazes me that the the riders change identities of the riders change, and yet the team there's something in the the team and the approach that they have to this discipline that, that yeah, brings but out. It, it, that not so much of a change for BMC because five of the eight riders who won today won the team time trial in 2015 Fair enough. on the tour. So, uh, you know, consistency is also yeah, a rule. there's some consistency yeah. there. I spoke at the finish to uh, their time trial coach, Marco Pinotti, uh, who won some team time trials himself in his days as a rider. Um, and he's always an interesting guy to speak to. I also saw Manuel Quinziato, the former BMC rider who was part of many successful team time trial teams. We'll hear briefly from him. He's now a rider agent. Um, I spoke to him at greater length, which we'll maybe hear at some future date. Um, but Quinziato on BMC's record in team time trials. And then we'll hear from their time trial coach, Marco Pinotti. They can still do that without me. <laughs> they can do it without you. Uh, what, what, I mean... We've seen this so often from BMC, we don't know if they're going to win, but they're so good at this discipline, yeah, no matter what the, the lineup is. What is the secret to, to that success? We train. We, we, we do train. I think that uh, till 2014 in Ponferrada, we almost never won a, a team time trial with a team. Like in the previous like six years of the team, uh, we never won one, except maybe one with Giulio Trentino. And there, that day, like uh, also with uh, with the help of Dario Brocardo, the uh, new coach that entered, that he was really focused on time trial, and then Marco Pinotti, we we found a perfect combination for uh, for that world championship, and and we won it, and winning it it motivated the all the riders, and we just started training. Like uh, every team camp in December, you know, in January, we were doing at least two or three times a week uh, training on that, and we got better and better, and, and that's the secret. At the end, team and trial is really a lot about how you race because uh, very often uh, look at the World Championship last year. Not often like the the best, the really strongest team wins. They win the team to race the better. Marco, look, looking at this with your your coach's head on, how, how did that ride compare to other rides? Were you happy with with the performance watching it from the car? I think it's. Uh, I mean, I know I knew from experience three years ago this was a be was was close. So, and uh, I said at the beginning, the strongest team uh, on paper is Sky. But, uh, you know, we, we make up this with, uh, with our work. And uh, on the paper, they have, a, you know, the, the best lineup. Maybe they had a bit, uh, some bad luck in the first stages with the crash of Bernal. 
and uh, and so I knew it was close. I knew quick step uh, in the final, maybe the condition. Uh, so they held them a little bit. They are a consistent, more average team because they don't have a GC rider, so a good lead out. Somewhat they were closing uh, in Swiss a 20 second without Dumoulin, so I was expecting that to be very competitive. And the Mikaton as well, they bring a team, but also they've been a little bit unlucky. And uh, so I think it is one of the most, uh, uh, I would say, you know, as close as a world championship winning uh, this event. And get the jersey was uh, I mean, was not the, the, first, the main goal was to gain time. Winning, I, I, mean, I had con- I have confidence uh, in, in the guys, but you know, rationally I would say it's difficult to win. But say, I, I believe in this guy, and uh, they 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 give me back whatever my, my beliefs. It yeah. was it was quite a technical course, and a few teams seem to have got their their pacing wrong, the strategy wrong, yeah. uh, and a, a few teams also uh, lo- lost quite a few riders. Was it the sort of course where you had to be prepared to to yeah. lose riders? Yeah, yeah, because when we did the recon on Wednesday. Uh, the condition of the wind were a little different. Uh, this morning I realized immediately, you know, that the wind was a lot stronger, so we changed a little bit the strategy to have, uh, I would say, uh, a more gradual start and uh, be, be, be there in the final. I think that was, that you can see this from the from the time split. Still other team, they, 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 they did a very strong final. The final was maybe equal for those guys, but we made a difference maybe where we kept eight guys on the long stretch road uh, from kilometer uh, 18, 225 when you still have eight riders. Is there a, is there a key rider? I mean, often they talk in team time trials about there being a, a kind of captain on the road. You've got you know, from Stefan Kung as a time trial specialist to Richie Port, Greg Van Avermaet. Is there is there a key guy in this lineup? I think probably Kung is the, the name that you know stand out uh, as a as a motor of the of the team. But that is this is a part the bedding was also really good. Van Gatter was also really good. Greg had the motivation. Everybody is a as you know, you've seen the only baby one is a lineup of uh, of uh, uh, this team of uh, Dauphine we lost 35 seconds from a team like Sky with basically this team without room. I think uh, everybody in this discipline is well is, is well prepared. They know that they know uh, a lot of the technique, and then they uh, they give always a little bit extra than uh, than. Uh, than they would do by individual time trial. And a great boost for the team. Any news on the team? Do you know it, have any insight into the future uh, of the team? Yeah, we are, we are confident. I am confident in what Ochovic uh, is doing, is working, and, uh, but you have to ask him directly <laughs> to have a good answer. The Cycling Podcast is supported by Science in Sport. Beta Fuel, the new super fuel from Science in Sport, is a two to one maltodextrin to fructose isotonic drink that delivers 80 grams of carbohydrates per serving without upsetting your stomach. This formulation means your stomach can process more carbohydrates per hour than glucose alone would allow. And this could make all the difference to your ride, whether you're cresting the Alpe d'Huez or just crossing the line at your local sportive. Available on scienceinsport.com from July the 12th. Science in Sport, fueled by science. Yes, thank you very much to Science and Sport for supporting the cycling podcast. We are very grateful to them. And they are, of course, still offering 25% off all their products at scienceinsport.com with the code SISCP25. That's SISCP25. Make sure you stock up on various hydration products in this hot weather which carries on and it was absolutely stifling today around oh. Sholley at the team time trial which uh, is perhaps uh, it can it, it can be a bit quite a bit cooler in this part of the world and we're going up to Brittany in the next couple of days and the weather there can be pretty unpredictable but yeah hopefully I mean you know that, that you know there's an old joke about Brittany I mean you know a guy could go into Brittany goes in a village and talks to a young guy a uh, young kid, it's raining, and he asks the young kid, is it always raining like this here? And the young kid says, I don't know, I'm only eight. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Um, we're we're going to, we'll talk about the, the big losers, I think, in the team time trial in the next part, but there were some other winners, I suppose, if we look at the, um, at the, 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 the finish sheet. Team uh, EF Education first, I think, uh, a great result for them. They were sixth on the stage. One of their main men for this event was uh, Lawson Craddock, who's been riding with a broken scapula, not a broken clavicle, as I said last night. One mm-hmm. or two of you pointed mm-hmm. out, cr- cr- sneaked in a corrections corner there. <laughs> um, but they, they rode really well. And um, Lawson Craddock, in his battle to 
uh, Carry On is actually the feature of our Kilometre Zero episode tomorrow. We'll hear from him and lots of people around him, including the medical team who've been patching him up and making sure he can carry on. Uh, but six for them on the day is extremely good. Um, 35 seconds down, overall 31 seconds conceded to Team Sky. They were they were cock a hoop with that, and Rigoberto Iran is very mm. well placed overall. Well, absolutely. I mean, he's uh, you know they would have possibly been vulnerable in that stage. I mean, I know they've got a lot of firepower in there with you know Taylor Finney and uh, you know, but Craddock compromised because of his injury. Um, so Iran in the top ten. You know, if you're looking at kind of a virtual GC and the tour, really, I mean, TJ Van Garderen has got top ten potential, but not a not a not a winner. We we wouldn't think not with Richie Port on the same team. Uh, Geraint Thomas, you know, again is in a similar position to Van Garderen in a way because Chris Froome is obviously the number one at Team Sky. Bob Jungles is is in a great position already. De Moulin's in a great position, and then Iran. So he really is right there. He's made some you know small but important gains over um, several riders, and you know. He will be uh, he'll be delighted to be in that position at this stage. Mm. I'm absolutely sure, especially with the likes of Port and Froome jumping up a few places today. Yeah, you, you could you, you can always uh, almost you know ask yourself whether, or as we mentioned and we suggested, there is not a kind of you know team culture of, of uh, team time trial because uh, Team Garmin in the, in the old I think was were one of the four teams in the race now who, who won. A team time for on the tour before mm. with Garmin. I think it was way back, uh, tw- twenty eleven. It was well, not far from here. It was yeah. at Les Arts. It was their first um, Tour de France stage win of of that team's history. And we probably all remember two thousand and nine when they finished very close second to Astana with mm. Lance Armstrong. Um, and uh, that was an amazing uh, ride, really, because they again then as they did have today, they had riders injured and and struggling mm. to hang on. And they were down to the the bare minimum five for a lot of the stage. Mm. Um, it was funny today with the new teams teams down to eight riders from nine. There's now a minimum of four. Um, well, the time is taken on the fourth man across the line, and uh, it was funny to see teams shedding as many riders as did. I asked Marco Pinotti about that. One little point on BMC. Uh, while I remember, I asked Quinziato about the the future of the team as well, and he said. That the, he thinks will be news within the next week on the team. We understand that Djokovic, uh, who runs the team, had a meeting on Monday. S- S- Monday today, today. Is, today. Sunday. Sorry, yesterday. Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. I don't know what day it is. Sunday. Um, and I, I'm not sure where that was, but it was with uh, an entity um, who were looking not just to take over sponsorship, but to take over ownership of the team. Apparently, so um, he says there'll be news on the team in the next. Uh, week we expect it to carry on, but scaled down and perhaps without Richie Port. Well, but with, yeah. Looking yeah. at the at the results still um, going up above uh, EF Education first team Sunweb, um, very solid uh, performance from them. Pretty fast finishing, and Demula is you know flying below the radar. Uh, hasn't put a foot wrong so far. Is is going well uh, clearly, and the big question is has he recovered from the Giro? I spoke to him at the finish. Here's what he had to say. Uh, yeah, we did an awesome job. Uh, I think um, the boys were amazing. And actually, last year at the team time trial at the Worlds, nobody really uh, suited up like I'm the strongest. And that was the same case today. There was not much difference. And that's exactly what you want. And that's what we did perfectly uh, today. And uh, we're really happy with this result. Next couple of days is just uh, about keeping out of trouble again, like last two days, and uh, doing every day we can to to uh, yeah to get some results, but also to stay safe for GC. So um, yeah, so far it's been working out really well. And how do you feel, Tom, after the the Giro? It was a very hard Giro. Do you feel you're fully recovered? So far, so good. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, you never know in the second half. I, I I have no idea. I never did two Grand Tours, but. Um, yeah, so far I'm uh, I'm feeling good. Yeah, De Moulin and Team Sunweb very much part of that top five of teams who had a great day. The other one that had a great day was Mitchelton Scott. Adam Yates 
of course crashed and lost a bit of time on the first day he was in the same group as Port and Froome after those crashes on the first stage and uh, this really you could you, this would be Adam Yates's kind of Achilles heel really time trialling on a real strong man's kind of course um, uh, th- th- having ridden it uh, obviously not at the same level as these guys but it was one don't be so modest like it, <laughs> it was one where uh, they were into the potentially into the red very early out of Cholet from the start line up a a considerable drag and then kind of force flat and rolling um, very very fast course at times and um, I gather that Mitchell and Scott thought a lot about today when picking their eight-man team for the tour. Um, as you look at the lineup that Mitchell and Scott have brought, they've really brought a, a squad to get Adam Yates through the first week up to the uh, basically get him to Roubaix safely and then leave him to. Uh, take care of the mountains. I mean, obviously, he's got Mikel Nieve and, and, you know, some of mm. the other riders. They're no, not slouches on the climbs, but this is a real kind of ruler squad. Um, but Matt White told me a little story about their team time trial at Tirreno Adriatico back in March. Um, it's on a... Is it on a seafront, Lido di Camaiore? If not, it's basically dead flat. It's sort of 57, 58 kilometre an hour average. And um, before that stage, Adam Yates was wanting to do turns and, and be part of the seven-man team. And um, Matt White said, no, no, look, you don't do turns. Just do do a little bit when you when you can. Um, but we don't want you blowing up. The idea is to get you to the finish as quickly as possible. You don't necessarily have to contribute to that. that this is not your day. And, of course, being uh, a, an elite athlete, they don't want to do that. They, they, they want to be in there in the mix. Um, but what happened in that stage was that I mean, look at the diesels that are in that lineup: Durbridge, uh, MP Hepburn, Bauer, um, Mezjek, who was also in that squad. Basically, Yates did a turn, and when he came back down the line, he was within an ace of missing the wheel. And Matt White said that at that speed, when you're getting near to 60 kilometres an hour on the absolute flat, Adam Yates being light as a feather, if he doesn't get on the wheel immediately, you know, the gap could open in a, in a split second and he could be in trouble. And that was a bit of a kind of wake up to Yates. And so today's strategy was that Yates basically did one turn in the first four kilometres and then sat on with Mikel Nieve and didn't do anything, um, but then did a little bit more in maybe the last seven or eight yeah, kilometres. He, sp- he, sprinted, he sprinted to the line, actually. But yeah, you're right. I, I mean, it was striking to see the different strategies within the team. Mitchell and Scott, they, 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 obviously they, they, they are told uh, Adam Yates and Mikel Nieve to sit back while the, the big guys were doing the job. And you had other teams... Team Sunweb were extremely consistent. I think the eight of them uh, uh, crossed the line together, sort, sort of. I mean, they were the most probably compact of them all. Uh, t- uh, Team Sky were very compact at first in the first half, but then they, lo- they lost L- Luke Rowe along the way because we know about his, you know, his, his injury problems. They, they lost they, they lost Walt Pools as well along the way, mm. which was a little bit more surprising. And then you, you had teams like Quick Step who finished with only four guys, and obviously they, dis- they decided to go full gas. And and the, and the ones who got dropped, you know, got dropped. So there, there were various approaches to, to, to the to this team time trial. And when you see the result with you know five or six teams with, without uh, within eleven seconds, well, all of it, finally all the tactics were were worthwhile. It's a bit like golf in that the aim is to get the ball around the course in as few shots as possible. It doesn't necessarily, you know, you can choose club selection and oh, sorry. I'm thinking Daniel Freeb's with us Um, (laughs) (laughs) talking about golf but there's a parallel there you don't have to ride the team time trial the same way it's about looking at the strength of your eight riders and as Matt White said to me it's actually more about looking at the weaknesses of your eight riders and taking those into account more than the strength because there will be times on the course um, where the real strong guys have to dial it back a bit and aren't riding at the absolute maximum that they might be able to but they have to think about and look after after their teammates and particularly when you've got a, a golden teammate like Adam Yates uh, you've got to get him round as quickly as possible not put him in trouble but we, we, saw, we, saw, we saw Bernard for instance uh, take turns but well, bearing in mind that he is the Colombian time travel champion but you know he was quite surprising when you saw Yates sit back and, uh, Ber- and or Nieve and Bernard taking turns it was I mean it's a fascinating discipline isn't it it's, it is like a chain where the chain is 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 only as strong as its as its weakest link and and it, you know looking at that team as you say the Mitchell and Scott team in particular they they are all big guys and and big rulers and 
Nieve and Yates really did stand out in that in that lineup, and yeah, having them sit on is is the most sensible approach. Giving them an armchair ride to the finish if you can, um, and it worked. I mean, I think given the less than perfect build up they've had to this stage with Impe and and Durbridge having heavy falls yesterday, they'll be pretty pleased with that. They'll be pretty happy to finish within ten seconds of the winners. Team Sky. As you mentioned, surprisingly, Wout Poles, you know, conceding over four minutes. He rode the Giro as well, of course, but that's a surprise. Castro Viejo there, um, Spanish time trial specialist. He was also tailed off a little bit, but not much. I mean, he was he was he was there pretty much the whole race. And, and yeah, rode, but he was really he well. was yeah giving it absolutely he, everything. He rode, he rode really well for the team, team and then dropping the off. The, yeah. the, probably the main dropouts of the day was Peter Sagan. I mean, he was he was he was actually, you know, he lost uh, con- you know he lost contact with the team yeah, after twenty five days. Yeah. So uh, which was quite surprising in a way. So maybe he realized early on that he wouldn't uh, keep the yellow jersey and decided to relax because he has other goals, winning stages, uh, fights for the green jersey. But uh, on the finish line, he said he was kind of. Uh, uh, tires and he had, he had a bad day. He had a, well, you know, he's Peter Sagan. So I, I thought maybe I, this is the one thing he can do. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or, looking for but it. my impression was that in the last ten k's, he, he, he spent the last ten k's thinking of the uh, you know one liner or the the nice little quote he would give because he he, he told all the TV guys uh, in in the mix zone. He said, uh, "Well, yeah, I had a bad day. I lost the the, the yellow jersey, but you know, uh, it's not Sunday every day," which was. Uh, Obviously, he was very proud of himself. Is that a, a <laughs> twist on an old Morrissey song there that he's... Uh, Who knows? Yeah, you know, <laughs> subliminal <laughs> Morrissey references in his interviews. Peter Sagan, he's capable of anything. Uh, Team Sky, I spoke to Geraint Thomas at the finish. Geraint Thomas, another one like Tom Demula, who's had a um, stress-free, trouble-free first few days and is, is you know, looking good. Um Here's what he had to say at the finish after the team time trial. Narrowly down on uh, BMC at the moment, but how did you feel the ride went? Yeah, decent. I think we sort of uh, rode well as a team and got it all out collectively. For me, it uh, felt good and just a bit, every time I seemed to hit the front was on the faster section, so you're kind of doing shorter turns and kind of felt like I could have got a bit more out. But uh, that was a bit frustrating, but um, yeah, I think all together we, we rode well and especially with there's a lot going on there. It was quite technical, even though it wasn't many corners. You know, it was changing the direction, the wind, and the climbs and the descents and everything. So, uh, yeah, I think we rode decent. How were the conditions? Because a lot of teams seem to be losing men. I mean, you more or less held it together. A few guys, a couple of guys dropped off. But how how tough was it with the wind and stuff as well? Yeah, it's always changing direction. So you're always sort of like, and there's a bit gusty, and you know, there's a bit flicks in the line or whatever. And obviously, it's not um, just one gradient either you know it's always up or down and uh, yes you're having to really sort of uh, change your turns depending on where you are on the course so uh, yeah I think it certainly favours the teams that can can ride well technically and uh, you know they're quite even as well so I think uh, it was decent for us but um, like I say just a bit frustrating I felt like I could add a bit more in the tank by the end but the sky do seem something seems to click this year for team sky and team time trials is that your feeling as well that um and, and is it a result of doing anything differently i don't think so i think it's always been decent when i've been, well not saying it's because of me but every ttt i've done we've always sort of been there or thereabouts obviously there's been a few in some grand tours when we haven't necessarily had our strongest team has been a bit sub you know what you'd expect but i think every time we've done it in the tour we've been in the top three I think three or four so yeah I think we've always sort of been there or thereabouts anyway but I think sometimes it just hasn't had the, the, the best sort of lineup. so we heard there from Geraint Thomas Team Sky uh, the losers the today's losers I mean Movistar an obvious example they came in with three leaders really four if you include Mark Soler it was pretty much just those guys left at the finish along with Andre Amador um, they finished with five and conceded 53 seconds so the advantage that, that Landa gained over and Valverde gained over Chris Froome and Richie Port on Saturday on stage one uh, was, was almost wiped out in mm. the case of Froome and, and was wiped out in the case of Port today. Yeah, and Quintana makes up nothing. I mean, uh, a bad result for them. Um, Richard, you reminded me of Alex Dowsett talking about Movistar and their kind of, 
get mm. up and ride it type we attitude. We played a, few, a couple of weeks ago with Alex Dowsett on, on the Movistar approach to team time trials. Yeah. He used to ride for them, of course, and uh, yeah, almost the opposite, really, of what I heard from Matt White about how Mitchett and Scott had kind of plotted their way around this course uh, with one goal in mind. And, um, you know, maybe Movistar paid there for having... I mean, that is a strong team on any course. I mean, they they really should be and have in the past been right up in the top two, three, four places in team time trials. Uh, so it's a surprise result that, that they did so, um, did so poorly uh, today. As we saw Landa struggling halfway. I mean, the, 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 the astonishing thing, Movistar are always puzzling in terms of strategy, but maybe that's what Alex Dowsett was saying, you know, that, you know, you, you, you have the impression they don't have a strategy, they have a philosophy, which is not exactly the same thing. And, and, and so that there's no kind of planning but when, when you look at the course the, 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 the last bit was quite bumpy and so obviously better for riders like Quintana, Lander and all. but we have the impression that they, they did so, so much hard work in the first part that they lost momentum in the second and Mov- Movistar doesn't don't cease to be astonishing puzzling for us you know seen from the the outside in the mountains you, you you're always waiting for them to attack they never do they they kind of never do every time there's a national on you can be sure they'll be at the back and and you and you have an impression they never seem to correct that it's not part of their philosophy or their culture and you, you, maybe that they you have the impression that they're riding on intuition or uh, improvise uh, they improvise a little bit and uh, well from time to time that's what you get uh, i'm just curious to know uh, Francois, what does a struggling Michelanda look like because we, we were joking just, the, just the well, same as uh, <laughs> we, uh, we, we've had a little j- gag in the car <laughs> haven't we Rich that Mikhail Lander's facial expression doesn't change you could have you know Mikhail Lander winning the lottery looks exactly the same as Mikhail Lander actually, quitting the Tour de France it came to me when we were at his team hotel the other day and we s- I saw him having lunch and <laughs> as I watched him eat lunch it occurred to me that his facial expression was exactly the same as when he was climbing Perigood yeah. last year <laughs> pouring <laughs> olive oil on salad he looks exactly the same as climbing <laughs> one of the steepest mountains. 450 watts <laughs> on a mountain. Is that, you you said Lionel Landa winning the lottery face. Someone needs to sort of do some kind yeah, of photo Yeah, there'll be, a, there'll be a meme before the morning, I'm <laughs> sure. Um, but the thing about Movistar is they've got this... Uh, gonna, yeah, we're in World Cup week. We're not mentioning football, but... Um, Never. They're, 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 they're Quartet reminds me of the uh, you know Le Carrier Magique. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. uh, Soler is the is the young pretender to that to that uh, to to be included in that group. We haven't seen enough of him uh, at this level yet. Although you know winning Paris Nice at, at his uh, stage of his career is is impressive enough. Um, but they you know they they lack the ability to stick the ball in the net. You know they mm. they've got. They've, they've got well, everything yeah, the, going. The, the Cali Magic were playing together, and they had Platini, the, you know, scoring the goals. Uh, the, the problem with the movie star, they, they, they seem to be they're, they're very good at playing, you know, at kicking the ball around and keeping it. But but in the end, they, they always you know fall short of scoring. Yeah. So that's that's the problem. Just to explain, Le Cali Magic was and the Magic Square was uh, the four-man midfield that France had in when they won the European Championships in 1984, and um, that's one of the big conundrums for any team, isn't it? How do you persuade riders of uh, you know, similar abilities to align behind one goal. What's the point of finishing, I don't know, two, second, fifth and ninth, which they possibly could, when they have the the potential to actually win the Tour de France? But they, they, they've they not got off to a great start, and no. it's only three days in. Maybe we should ask, you know, Spanish cycling expert Fran Reyes, because I was with Fran last night, actually, and, and we, we had this discussion, and, and he, he offered an explanation, and uh, I'd be... You know, I'd be glad if you, I mean, if we could some at some time during the tour uh, hear his explanation because I didn't understand a word of it. <laughs> well, look forward was to it, that. Was it, a bit, was it a bit quick for you, we'll Francois? We'll, get, we'll definitely get him on. A couple more uh, losers, I suppose. Uh, Lotto and El Yumbo felt they got their strategy wrong, the pacing wrong. They they started too conservatively, too slow. They felt, and they've lost quite a lot of time. One fifteen down, thirteenth team. That's. Um, that's a, a bit of a blow to Primus Roglic, who we've been looking forward to seeing how he gets on here. Um, you know, not not a good performance. Just ahead of them, AG2R. I don't think they're losers. 115 down as well. This is the great kind of the contradiction of a team yeah. time trial, isn't it? Yeah. Lotto Eno Yumbo and AG2R have lost exactly the same amount but of time yeah. to BMC. But one is, I think, a 
decent performance, and one is a little bit of a surprise. I think AG2R will be will be happy with yeah, happy issue. They, they were that, very no? happy about it. Romain Bardet at, at the uh, at the finish said uh, that 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 really worked at it. That that improved at it. They 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 good you know uh, specialists of this kind of effort with Sylvain uh, Dillier and uh, Pierre Latour. Pierre, Pierre Latour turns out to be uh, exceptional. This young guy we know is is one of the hopefuls of cycling. Uh, it, we've seen him and we've seen him a little bit as a climber in the last couple of years, and he actually won the the French time trial. Uh, title and and he was very very instrumental in in making sure he didn't l lose a lot of time and 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 Bardi was really really um, relieved and happy by by this effort and he said something interesting because he, he was one of the uh, uh, GC uh, leaders who didn't lose uh, any time on on day one and so he was asked about it again and he said I don't want to to, to I don't want to say you know to that others like Chris Froome lost time on that day because I respect my rivals the, the time is only one uh, on 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 riders you know on the bike uh, in the mountains and not on crashes i mean which was pretty you know nice from, from looking a little bit say. ahead but Bardet, i mean that, that would that was the first big obstacle for him and if he can get through the second on the cobbles That's on right. sunday he can really start to think about growing into the tour as a and you know as a potential winner rather than just a podium potential and looking at their squad i mean He's got Oliver Narsen and Sylvain Dillier, mm. cobbled experts. Dillier second in Paris-Roubaix, of course, this year. Uh, Narsen seems to be in the break every time in Belgium. Uh, he's, they've, they've picked a smart squad here, AG Tour. They've actually, without having a huge budget, managed to put together a team that looks like it's all aligned behind this one goal, and, and, and it's an improvement on previous years. It's very interesting the way they're, they're, they're actually improving every year, adding an element to the puzzle. Uh, they're, they're working a little bit like Team Sunweb did to, 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 you know, to lead Dumoulin to finally win the Giro. Every year, and it's, it's tricky these days with only eight you know, riders on the Grand Tours, and I think Vincent Avenue, their manager, actually yeah, managed to find you know, the right balance, and, and my impression as well. I mean, I, you know, as you know, I talked to, to day a little bit on the phone as you could hear yesterday uh he, he, he himself improves every every year it makes it a little bit you know just a, you know the little detail that's improving gradually and you know i, I would never say he's a, he's, a, he's a leading contender for for winning the tour because he has his flaws but if circumstances you know you know turn uh, his way well why not well, well why we, not indeed? Shall we leave it there, chaps? Uh, one other loser we should mention: Team UAE, uh, Emirates, uh, Dan Martin's team. Uh, they were they were behind Lotto and El Yumbo. Uh, lost one thirty-eight. Uh, About par, though, I'd say. For well, them, because they've I had a say. poor, a poor season. They've never. So I mean, in their short, you know, short time, they've never been terribly good, and they are the sort of the remnants of the old Lamprey team. So, uh, your great point, Richard, about team time trialing being in the DNA of not just the, the riders but the staff and the whole kind of expectation that this is what we're good at. I don't think it exists at uh, UAE really. No. And I think the team time trial is that we talk a lot about the planning and the, and and the thought and the the, the detail um, behind a lot of performances in cycling these days. And I think those teams that are very really well organised in, in that regard are, are rewarded in a team time trial, aren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, BMC, Sky, Quickstep, Mitchelton, Scott, Sunweb. You know, th those are the probably the five, and maybe throw. EF Education first in there as well. They are the teams that, that appear to. Yeah, have I stand up from time to time. You yeah. know, yeah. do well. There, there, there's another one, uh, GC contender, whose uh, <laughs> performances so far remain totally uh, uh, impossible to decipher, and that's uh, Vincenzo Nibali. Uh, you Good know, point. Yeah, mm. I forgot about him completely. Wow. Yeah, I mean, they were again probably par eleventh, uh, yeah. one hundred six down. I think that's a that's a pretty good performance for them actually. Um, yeah, not bad, not bad. Just behind Movistar, not bad. I mean, they've got they've got quite a strong team here. The Isagiri brothers, both mm. strong riders, strong time trialers. Uh, really if you'd well said before climbers. that Nibali would only lose 13 seconds to Quintana in the team time trial, you'd think, blimey, Bahrain have pulled out an absolute worldie of a ride. But uh, you know, so they'll they'll probably look at the results and 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 say, well, that's. It's gone better for them than it might one, have done. One thing I remember from the the Vuelta last year was uh, Chris Froome talking about stage three into Andorra and making that really hard with Gianni Mosk on and so on in order to try and put Nibali in trouble because he said Nibali is notoriously a slow starter in Grand Tours. And if you're going to take advantage of 
any, uh, you know, um, lack of condition or form or whatever he might have. You really have to do that in the first few days. Having said that, of course, when he won the Tour in 2014, he won stage two. And then yeah, he, he performed the very well all the way. <laughs> but, but nevertheless, yeah. that's the exception that yeah. proves the rule. He, he, does, he is somebody who we tend to see riding very strongly in the third week of a Grand Tour. So still a long way to go. Shall we leave it there? Mm-hmm. We'll Maybe somewhere. looking ahead quickly to the to the to the next uh, few stages. Greg Van Havermat is in yellow, mm. and with the cobbles looming at the end of next week, and other tricky stages along the yeah, way. Could, well, they're, could they're not going to be tricky for him. No, are that's they? what Mood, I'm saying. Uh, that's what, that's what I'm saying. He could he could keep the yellow jersey for a long time. Yeah, because until Annecy, he could have an Annecy. Yeah. <laughs> Cool, well, let's go and uh, find uh, Burger King beside the cemetery somewhere. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lionel. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Francois. Thank you, Richard. You have been listening to the Cycling Podcast at the 2018 Tour de France. Thanks to our sponsors, Tafa and Science in Sport. The music is by Santoré. This episode was produced by Tom Wally.